What's good YouTube, it's your boy Gerald and welcome back to Gerald Trades, a place where we talk about forex trading, forex strategies and day trading, dedicated to keeping you profitable in the markets. Now today in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the best forex strategy for day trading. Now the reason why I say this is the best forex strategy for day trading is because this forex strategy is going to show you exactly where to enter the markets, when to enter the markets and how to enter the markets. Now, this is very important, especially if you're day trading, because knowing this can be the difference between winning and losing. So if that sounds good to you, be sure to watch this video right through to the end because I'm going to be revealing everything to you guys and you're not going to want to miss out. Okay, now before I start going on too much, let's jump straight into the video. <laughs> Okay, now, first things first, before we start looking at the lower time frame, we have to establish what the high time frame is doing for this Forex strategy. Simply because, as traders, this game is rigged. It is actually designed for us to lose. Now, the only way to limit the losses is to be able to stack as many probabilities and as many variables in our favor. And the high time frame is a perfect place to do that because if we can identify the trend of the high time frame, we're gonna be able to trade based on that direction, which is therefore gonna increase our win rate of our overall strategy. Now for the high time frame, I like to look at the daily chart. I've just gone the daily here, like so. Okay, now what we're looking for on the high time frame is very simple to be able to identify the trend. We're gonna go in and select our moving average. If we just select moving average, if we pull it up, here, yeah, boom. We're going to set our moving average to 21. And what we're looking for is very, very simple, guys. Actually, one more thing. We're going to, after we set the moving average, we're going to leave it to open. Okay, now let's do that. Okay. Now, what we're looking for is very simple on this high time frame. When price is above the 21 moving average, we're only looking for buys in the markets on the lower time frame. And when price is below the moving average, we're only looking for sales in the markets on the lower time frame, of course. Now, a way we can further add confirmation to our moving average when we're identifying trend on the high time frame is to simply look at how price is behaving when it's above the moving average and when it's below the moving average. When price is above the moving average, what we're simply looking for is to see once price does close above the moving average, is it breaking previous old highs? Because that is signs of bullishness and strength. And what when the lows form, are they making higher lows? Because of course, that's a sign of uptrend. So we can use that as confirmation that what our moving average is telling us. And guys, that's pretty much it. And when it comes to the downside now, to the sell side of the markets, what we're looking for is very simple. When price is below the moving average, is it breaking old lows like it's doing here and are the highs that are forming are they lower highs and of course that's a signal of weakness and that price is in turn in that downtrend guys and that's pretty much it for the high time frame we don't need to over complicate we don't need to you know make it too hard of a choice so Here's what we've established. When price is above the tonal moving average, we're looking for longs and we're looking to see if price is making higher lows and higher highs and breaking those previous highs with ease. And when price is below the moving average, we're looking for price to make lower lows and lower highs. And that's going to be a sign of weakness. And that's it, guys. Now, once we have identified the trend, we then go to the lower time frame and then we then use the lower time frame strategy, which I will be going into in a moment. So just bear with me. So for the lower time frame examples, we're gonna be using the bear side. So it's pretty fair. That's what's been happening most recently here. So we're gonna be using this piece of price action as example on our lower time frame charts. Okay, now let's jump into the lower time frame. Before I do that, okay, so we start so about February the 22nd. So we're gonna go into the lower time frame on the 15 minute chart and start looking from February the 22nd. Okay, now that we're on the 15 minute time frame, the lower time frame, of course, we're gonna need two moving averages. We're gonna need the 25 moving average and we're gonna need the 50 moving average. I'd already set up, but you just have to go in your charts again, set that to 25 and go into your charts again and set that to 50, if I just get to show again. And what we're looking for is very simple on the lower time frame, guys. 
when the 25 moving average crosses below the 50 moving average we're going to be looking for sales in the market and when the 25 moving average crosses above the moving average we're going to be looking for longs in the market now remember we're going to be looking at bearish examples first and our high time frame as you remember guys we're looking at that bearish piece of price action from 20 from february the 22nd guys so we're going to be looking for sales in the market because our high time frame is telling us the market's in a downtrend so what we're going to be looking for again is for the 25 moving average to cross below the 50 moving average now a big big mistake i see many people who day trade make is that they're missing very important elements which are specific to day trading guys most people don't understand that each style of trading has its own specific characteristics and if you don't know those characteristics it's going to be very hard for you to trade that style of trading very effectively and when day trading a very specific element to day trading that we're going to be adding is time of day guys now i know most people are thinking oh what is that what do i mean by that some of you guys may actually know what time of day already is guys but what I mean by this is we're going to be focusing on certain times of the day when the market has the highest probability of moving and actually showing us our trade opportunity, guys. And believe it or not, the time you take your trades when day trading Forex can be the difference between being profitable and losing, guys. So it's very important to focus on the times of day when the market produces the most volatility because as traders we need volatility volatility is what makes us money guys now the times of day to be focusing on are going to be the london session and the new york session guys okay now the london session the best times i've found to work for me is that the london session usually starts from around 7 till 10 so i'm just going to mark that out for you so if we get find 7 here okay sevens here and to about 10 in the up in the morning so this is going to be our london session and our new york session usually starts at 12th and it ends around three so just mark that out so i can give you guys a visual representation of what the new york session is so three Okay, here so let's just say that and as you can see guys you can visibly see that during these times of the day we see the most movement in the market now these are the times we're going to be focusing on for our strategy and with this forex strategy we're looking for divergences to happen either just before the start of the session during the session sometimes we might get like maybe 10 15 minutes after the session that's still fine because we still get that post volatility sometimes and remember, because we're bearish on the high time frame, so for example, on this day, what we'd be looking for? So we'd be looking for price to have that bearish divergence during the London session or the New York session. And as you can see, guys, in the New York session, we do get that 25 moving average crossing below the 50 moving average, guys. And that is our bearish signal to start looking for entries in the markets. Now, the way we enter the markets is very, very, very simple, guys. We're going to be entering on the low that forms before the high that forms. If that makes sense so once we get the divergence we look at the previous high and we look at the previous low because we're trying to enter short the market we're going to have a sell stop below the old low and we're going to wait for price to run through that sell stop and we're going to be triggered short in the markets guys so in this example our sell stop will be below this low here and as you can see we get that divergence price breaks the sell stop and then would be in in the markets and would have been able to make a nice profit on this day guys and for our stop loss placement guys we'll always place our stop above the high that this low formed guys so it's always the previous high so we'd enter this on the sell stop here boom and then our stop loss is here okay now in this example the divergence has already happened we're in a downtrend so what we're looking for is very very simple guys we're looking for our entry to form during those sessions guys so during the london session because we're bearish we're waiting to see if price can make a high and then once we see that high form and we start to see price move away from that high we're looking to enter at the low again with our sell stop guys so in this example as you can see the london session starts around here okay cool around here boom so this is this is our london session here 
And what we're waiting to see is for price to make a lower low during that session, guys. So it made the low, then it made the high. So this low we'll be looking at during the London session. And as you can see, price breaks the low. We'd have our sell stop here with our stop loss above that previous high. And we'd be triggered in the market. We do see this slight retracement higher, but it wouldn't have triggered us out on a stop loss. And that would have been a very, very nice trade to make on that day. And if we wanted to get another entry on this day, we see price makes that high going to, into the New York session, 12 o'clock. We look at the low that formed. The low is formed here, if you can see. And then, so what would happen? We'd have our sell stop below this low, anticipating price going lower and breaking that low and continuing its downward trend. And as you can see, we'd have our sell stop here. It gets triggered by this candle here. We get activated in the market of our sell stop with our stop loss above the high and it would have been another profitable trade. So see, we're looking for very specific things to happen, guys. Now, sometimes you might see like price in a downtrend have a bullish divergence, but guys, don't focus on those bullish divergences. Because we're bearish on the high time frame. when we see that 25 moving average crossing above the 50, that is a bullish divergence, but because our high time frame is telling us to be bearish, we completely just fade this opportunity. We don't focus on this side of the market. We're only focusing on the bearish divergences. So this trade, even if it was a possible trade, would not have been part of it because it's not part of what we're looking for. We're looking for a very specific thing, guys. Now for the bullish examples, we're gonna be focusing on this piece of price action here. So starting from the 21st of December. Okay, now that we're here on the 21st of December, Remember, now because we're looking for bullishness on the lower time frame, we're looking for that 25 moving average to cross above the 50. And it's either going to happen during the London session or the New York session or just before the London or the New York session. And after we do see that divergence, we're looking for that market shift. So in this time, we're going to be looking for price to make those higher highs just before the London session or just before the New York session or sometimes it's gonna happen during that session. So these are very, very specific things. I, I know I keep saying it's very, very specific. I just need to get you guys to understand exactly what we're looking for. We're not trying to guess. We're not trying to use in random times of the day. We're using very specific times and we're looking for very specific things. Now in this example, we do see that bullish divergence happen just slightly before the start of the London session. Remember the London session starts at seven. So this bullish divergence, like I said, sometimes it will form just before the session, okay? So we see that bullish divergence here. And what we're looking for, once you get that bullish divergence, we want to see price make higher highs. And we're gonna be entering on a buy stop above the previous high. So in this example, our buy stop would be above this high here. and would have been triggered during the London session, just here, We're on this candle here, that candle would have triggered our buy stop. And because our stop loss is below the previous low from where we enter on the high, so it would have been this low, look at this. We get the trigger in here, so we're, we're in on the long here. Price does come back down, but because our stop loss below this low, we never would have been tagged. It would have been pretty close, but never would have been tagged. And look at this, probably about a 10 pip stop loss to make, probably 30 pips. So it would have been a nice three to one or even a two to one. Okay, now on the next day in this example, we do see that bullish divergence happening at 10.30. So this is way before the time of day that we look for our trades. But because we've had that bullish divergence, we're anticipating price during our session, which is going to be the New York session now because it's happened way after the London session, we're going to be anticipating price to be making a higher high during the New York session. We're going to be entering on a buy stop on that high. So the New York session does come along. So it's 12.30 here. Price makes a low. So we'd have our buy stop on this high here. During the New York session, price does break the high. So it would have been triggered on the long here. And look how look at that it would be nice so triggered on the on the buy stop here on our long but our stop loss is here now with this 
have been a good risk to reward maybe it would have been a one-to-one -one. and like i said some people are usually happy with one-to-ones i personally probably would have held for a two-to-one which it can be but i recommend with day trading guys try not to hold trades for the next day because sometimes you can get that reversal volatility and it can knock you out of position but say if you guys did hold maybe on the next day it would have been capitalized on way more than a two to one okay now in this example do you see the bullish divergence happening during the london session and once you do see that bullish divergence we're just waiting for that higher high to be made during the session and as you can see price makes a high here we'd mark that out is during the session oh, pardon me and would have a buy stop here price triggers it here i don't know if it quite tagged it here but price does fully trigger the buy stop here and we never would have had no drawdown in this example now guys i really have one important thing i have to let you guys know be careful with your risk to reward management guys don't over leverage because this is the number one reason why you probably don't see success when you're day trading guys is because you're risking too much on one opportunity when there's going to be thousands of opportunities to come now imagine if you're risking all your account on one trade and you lose that trade maybe the next five trades you was going to win and you never would have been able to capitalize on that trade so guys always have strict rules for risk to reward guys and the only way you're going to get good with this strategy guys is if you go and back test everything I've told you in this in this video, guys. Go and back test it. Go look on the daily chart, identify a trend, go on the lower time frame during that time and start plotting the divergence. It could be a bullish divergence or a bearish divergence. Start looking at it. Start back testing and start studying it. And that's the only way you're gonna get good. You can't cheat this part. I hope you guys enjoyed that Forex strategy and you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to smash that like button and comment below. What do you do to stay disciplined in the markets? Write something, maybe someone who read the comments later on might find valuable in what you have to say. Be sure to smash that subscribe button and hit that bell notification button because I post videos like this every week and you'll be notified when I next post. This is the best Forex strategy for day trading and I will see you guys in the next video.